Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of Amy Romeo Crafts, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this really pretty angel Christmas tree ornament using faux leather heat transfer vinyl and a Cricut. So if you're ready to get started, let's go ahead and dive in. The SVG file for this project is available in my shop. It's part of my holiday faux leather crafting event where I'm sharing a brand new holiday SVG and video tutorial every day for 20 days. I'll leave a link on the screen for you so you can get the SVG or you can visit amyromeo.com holiday to see all of the event's designs. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make this project. I'll be using the Cricut Maker today, but you could use any of the current Cricut machines because we'll be cutting our faux leather with the standard fine point blade that's included on all of those machines. So this project is going to have a faux leather base and then we'll be applying layers of heat transfer vinyl on top, but you could also use permanent vinyl instead of heat transfer vinyl if that's what you have on hand. And if you don't have faux leather, you could always cut the base for this project. Instead of faux leather, you could use cardstock and then you can apply your vinyl on top of the cardstock. This design would also make a great gift tag from cardstock and vinyl as well. So the faux leather that I'm using, this one happens to be on a roll. You can use faux leather that's on a roll or in sheets, and I'll have links to all of these supplies for you. The vinyls that I'm using, I'm using some regular solid colors of heat transfer vinyl, I have some glitter heat transfer vinyls, and I also have some foil iron-on. But you can choose whatever vinyls and faux leather colors you'd like to really customize this project for you. I'll be using the purple strong grip mat to cut the faux leather and the green standard grip cutting mat to cut my vinyls. If you are using either of the Cricut Joy machines, you can just use the green Joy size mats. To press the vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my Cricut Easy Press Mini set to the low setting. You could also use a regular Easy Press set to about 265 degrees. Some other tools I'll be using, I have some blue painter's tape that's going to help me get good cuts with my faux leather. I have some craft scissors and also some detail scissors, which are great for trimming up fuzzies on faux leather. You'll need a weeding tool. You could use a hook or a pin pen style. You'll need some glue to glue the front and the back of the ornament together. I like to use Fabri-Tac, but you could also use Barely Art Glue or any good fabric glue that you have. If you're doing cardstock, then Barely Art Glue is probably your best choice for gluing the cardstock together. Then lastly, you'll need some ribbon to tie up your ornament. I may use this gold or I may use a blue, but at any kind of thin ribbon, this is a 3 8 inch ribbon or a little bit more narrow would be good. Just a ribbon to tie up the loop and create a loop for your ornament. So let's hop into Design Space and let's get our ornament set up to cut and then we'll begin cutting out our mats. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image, and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG file is for this project. Click on it to open it, and you'll see a preview of the project here, and then click Upload. Click on it to select it from your recent uploads row, and then click Add to Canvas. So I wanted to briefly mention the what's happening here with the shapes. So the light blue layers that you see on the bottom, that's the front and the back of the ornament. Those will both cut from faux leather or cardstock if you're using cardstock. Those two pieces will be glued together after we press all the vinyl layers and it'll create a nice structured firm ornament that will hang nicely on your tree. All of the other layers will cut from heat transfer vinyl or permanent vinyl if that's what you've chosen to go with. And I wanted to mention you can go two different ways with this. So I've chosen a colored faux leather and then a white dress. And you can see all the cutouts here in this lacy skirt show the color underneath. And that's the sort of pop of color. You could also do this in reverse where you do white faux leather on the bottom and then your angel and her dress are another color. So then you would have white popping through. That's up to you. All of these other layers will cut from heat transfer vinyl and I'll show you the order in which we apply them. I'll also include a layering guide for you in your download folder, which is a graphic that shows you which layers to press in which order. Lastly, I wanted to mention the 2023 here in the banner. This is These numbers are actually cut out of the banner. And if you're watching this in the future and you don't wanna cut the date 2023, maybe you wanna cut 2024, or you want to have no text or your own custom text, you can hide this 
2023 and create your own text. So let me show you quickly how to do that. Click on the layer that's for the banner and then click on contour and contour will show us all of the little shapes that are going to cut on this layer. So see how they're darker? The 2023 is darker. If we start clicking on them, they're going to turn a lighter gray and we can see them disappearing from the banner here on this side. So just click on each of those numbers and then X out of this menu and you can see the 2023 is gone. If you wanted to create your own text, just click on the text tool. You can choose your own font. I'm just gonna go with this one for demonstration purposes. I've written out 2024. I'm gonna drag that a little smaller and drag it up here onto my banner and just get it the right size. And then that would be an additional layer that you would cut from heat transfer vinyl and apply while you're layering the ornament. Okay, so I'm not going to do the 2024 because I'm gonna cut the 2023. So we will click back on the banner layer, return to contour and quickly add back those shapes. Okay, great. So let's click the make it button. I'm loading my materials on a mat. And the first thing I need to do is click on every mat and mirror it. And that's because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. If you're using permanent vinyl, then you would not mirror the permanent vinyl mats, only faux leather mats and heat transfer vinyl mats. Okay, great. So now we're gonna go back through. And what I like to do is just drag my shapes apart from the edges a little bit. That helps me when I'm weeding. Now here I have the angel wings and the halo. They are two separate pieces. You can either cut them from the same color, which I'm going to do in this video. I'm gonna cut them from glitter gold, but I wanted to keep them separate for you in case you wanted to make your wings a color that was different than your halo. So that's why they're not attached and grouped together. They're meant to cut separately. Here are my faux leather or the cardstock background. I like to drag them apart from the edges because I do put blue painter's tape around all sides. So I like to give myself a little room for that. And here I like to make a mental note of what size faux leather I'll need to cut to put on my mat. Looks like I need a shape about nine inches wide and six inches tall. So I like to cut the faux leather mat first. So I'll remain on that mat and then click continue. And I'll be using the faux leather paper thin setting. If you don't have the setting bookmarked like as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can find this setting. So I'll click on faux leather paper thin and you always wanna choose more pressure. Here's that reminder that we're just using the regular fine point blade with this setting. And now we're ready to cut our faux leather mat. When it's time to return to Design Space and cut out all of the vinyl mats, you're going to want to use the recommended cut setting for your particular material. So I'm using some regular heat transfer vinyl. I'll use the vinyl setting for that. I'm using some glitter heat transfer vinyl. I'll use glitter vinyl for that setting. And just check your manufacturer's recommendations and go with that cut setting for your vinyl layers. Let's hop back to my overhead camera and we'll get our mats cut out and our ornament assembled. So I've already trimmed a piece of that light blue faux leather to that nine inches by six inches size. And the reason we trim it is because it's gonna help us get our material to stick better to the mat when we place that blue painter's tape around. Taping down a smaller piece of faux leather is less likely to move, and that's why I recommend this technique. So we're gonna put the pretty side down on our mat, and then we're going to use some blue painter's tape and tape all around. And I actually have some pieces of blue painter's tape that I've used before, and I like to recycle these. You can use these, I would say four or five times before you need to get new tape. So we have our material setting of faux leather paper thin with more pressure ready to go. So we'll just load our mat and begin the cut. So the cut has run one time and the faux leather paper thin setting is an automatic double cut. So it actually cut our shapes twice. 
However, sometimes that doesn't cut the faux leather all the way through, which is no problem because we can always repeat the cut as long as we haven't unloaded the mat. So the first thing we want to do is use a sharp weeding tool, lift up an edge of that faux leather cut and see if it went all the way through. And that looks good. If it lifts up and there's still a lot of pieces holding down to the mat, you know, still connected to the faux leather outside, then just repeat the cut as many times as needed. You can do that by just pressing the cut button, or if you're on the Cricut Joy, the option to rerun will be on your screen. But these shapes look good, so I'll unload my mat, and I'll carefully peel away my shapes. Remember we have that little ornament hole at the top, so you'll wanna make sure you pop that out. And this is a great opportunity to check the edges of your faux leather. If you have any little fuzzies that are sticking up, that's totally normal. You could just go around with your small curved scissors and trim up those edges. So now I'm going to return to Design Space. I'm going to cut out all of my vinyl layers. I'm gonna weed away the excess vinyl and then we'll have all of our vinyl and faux leather layers ready to assemble. So I finished cutting and weeding all of my vinyl layers. I'm gonna get my heat pressing pad ready to go. I have my Easy Press Mini set to low. That's that first green line. You can also use a regular Easy Press set to about 265 degrees. And you will need a cover sheet of some kind. This is a Teflon sheet that I use for the same kind that you use for making t-shirts. I've just trimmed it down to size. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. And this protects your heating surface, and it also protects your faux leather and your vinyl. So the first layer I'm going to put on is the sort of backing layer. And I wanted to mention why I created this, and you can eliminate this in the layers if you'd like to, but I found if I put just the lacy part of the wings directly onto the faux leather, they sort of got lost a little bit and they weren't clearly defined as wings. So I wanted to make this little back layer and that will go first. And then let me show you what the wings look like with that on. Now you could make this, you know, light blue or any other accent color you'd like, but I feel like it does give the wings a little more structure. So let's line this up. Remember, I'll have that layering guide for you in the download folder, or you can watch this video. There we go, that looks good. We're gonna cover with our little cover sheet, and we're gonna press all over for about 10 seconds. So I'll remove my cover sheet, and then I like to keep the faux leather flat, and then just gently peel away that little clear cover sheet. If when you're peeling, your vinyl looks like it's going to lift up, just place it right back down and press for a few more seconds. But that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna layer the gold part of the wings. And on this layer, you'll see that there's a little bit of an outline of that under layer around the edges of the gold. And we'll repeat pressing for 10 seconds. Again, I'm trying to keep the faux leather flat and just peeling away the cover sheet. And that looks really pretty. So we only have three layers left. One is the angel herself. So I'm gonna do that one next. And what I wanna do is use that little top hole cutout to help me line up where her top of her head should go. Also, you should have a nice edge of the sort of background color, whatever that faux leather color is, showing. And you can see how pretty the color shows through on her skirt. There we go. Now I'm going to put on her halo. And 
Again, we're lining up the bottom part of the halo with that little circle cut out. And the last layer will be the banner. So this, you wanna sort of line up with the edges of the faux leather. You can see where the blue faux leather juts out a little bit, and that's where the edges of the banner go. The banner should look like it's in her hands. And there you have it. You might be able to see there's almost an embossed effect from the wings underneath on the top of her dress, which I think is kind of pretty. It makes sort of a, a lacy effect that's coming through the white vinyl layer. So this is pretty warm and before I glue it, I want it to cool nice and flat. So I'm going to place it here underneath my heat pressing pad while I get my glue ready to go. So again, I'm just using Fabri-Tac you can use any good fabric glue. And I do have a trick for making sure after we glue these pieces, the edges are nice and firm and tight together and you'll get an almost seamless look. And the way we do that is by using a heavy book. So I'm going to, let's see, I'll flip the back over and I'm just going to apply glue to the back of the entire ornament. And you wanna get close to the edge, but not so close to the edge. That's because when we press this down, the glue is going to seep a little bit toward the edges, which is exactly what we want. What I like about using this glue is it's very easy to apply and it's easy to clean up if any glue does seep out of the edges. You could just wipe it off with your finger or you can use a damp paper towel. There we go. And now we'll take our top angel, place it on top. And you want to spend just a moment lining up all of those edges, lining up the hole. So we don't see any of the bottom layer on the top side. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to lay it here on my surface, cover it with my heavy book, and I'll let it dry for about an hour. And then I'll hop back real quick and show you how I tie the ribbon. So our ornament has had time to dry under our heavy book and we'll just take a look. Oh, and that looks really nice. It's nice and stiff and you can see the seam on the edge is really nice and close together. So it gives it a really nice finished look. If you wanted to, you could take a color coordinated Sharpie and you could color all around the edges to really finish off the edge and eliminate that white edge and have it look a little more um, matching to the front and the back, but that's up to you. So I do have some thicker ribbon here. This is a 3 8 inch, but I think I'm gonna use this pretty blue, which is thinner. This is 1 8 inch, and you could just loop it through and tie a little knot at the top or tie a bow. But what I did was I took about a 12 inch piece of ribbon and I just tied a little tiny bow up at the end and I left my loop at the bottom. And all I'm gonna do is thread my loop through from front to back. And then I have that little loop at the back. I'm just gonna thread the bow right through the loop in the back and then pull. And there we go. Our angel ornament is complete. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you want to see the rest of the 20 projects I've created for the faux leather holiday crafting event, I'll leave a link to a playlist for you so you can check them out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.